Hey everybody, welcome to House of White Presents. This is Squirrel, and I have my friend Leslie Levy with me today. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Sharon. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Today we are going to be tackling what seems on the surface a very simple topic, but it really is quite complicated. We're going to be talking about the elements that are thematic of the suits in the tarot. Do you have anything to say about the elements, Leslie? Yeah, look, the elements are pretty amazing tools that you can use as part of the tarot as long as you don't get too bogged down with them and have the elements overpower what the overall meaning of the card is. I find that that's something that I used to do a little bit. Me too. What happens even with elements, and we're going to give you the traditional or a traditional keyword combination of what the elements are, but you have to remember that these are just guidelines. We're going to give you those traditional key elements, but we're also going to give you insights of how we see them to help you be able to see them in your own right, and then we're going to discuss how just because that element is the theme of the suit, you don't have to get locked into that and only use that for the suit. So Absolutely. Like I said. And that's what I used and that's what I used to do. It was like if it was wands and it was fire, then I could only think about fiery things for that suit, even though the card might be telling me something different. And so by using it just as a guideline, for me what it's done along with Dusty's course obviously means that I can be more specific and more accurate with the readings because I'm not boxed in by elements. Right. You're not boxed in by elements and you're not boxed in by traditional key word meanings. Absolutely. So, let's talk about the elements themselves real quick and the suits that correspond to them. So we're going to do it in the order of fire, earth, air, and water. So we'll start with wands. And I'll go ahead and just read off the traditional meaning from, from Dusty White's The Easiest Way to, to Learn Tarot Ever. Because this is this book is pretty much my little Bible for tarot. You'll see other themes in other books, and I'd like to address that as well. But for first, I'm going to read off what they mean. And then Leslie is going to explain how how they feel to her. Mm. So this is going to be really interesting. So wands are traditionally seen as fire. They're seen as action, energy, ambition, competition, and aggression. The overall theme for wands in the traditional sense is taking action. Leslie, what do you think about that? Yeah, and if you come back to what fire is about, I mean, when we look at a fire, it's something that burns hot. It consumes. Um, a bushfire travels quickly. So one of the things that I did with the elements, rather than just memorizing words, just as we don't memorize words with the cards themselves, I thought about what, what does fire do in a constructive way and in a destructive way. And that can give us like a positive, um, negative aspect to the element within a card. Nice. Nice. Now, you said fire how fire feels and fire when you think of it when you see somebody with a fiery nature you think they're mm. passionate oh yeah yeah so, and, and then motivated motivated and passionate passion a lot of people you think oh passion it's an emotion isn't it it can be tied to emotion if you feel passionate about something you feel very strongly about it so it's not dismissing emotion at all yeah and that's that where it comes sense? back to what you were saying about guidelines mm -hmm. you know we look at the term passion and we think oh yes someone's passionately in love with someone therefore it's all about emotion but what's creating the passion is that fire that motivation that that to love someone if yeah. that makes sense that made and beautiful that's where, sense and that's where that guideline you know what you said about guideline is so true and it allows a little bit of wriggle room because there is nothing in this world, nothing is completely separate. Every, one, one thing merges into the other. You know, the fire is lit 
and it burns because of the assistance of, of oxygen. You know, when it dies down, it becomes ashes and then that's where it turns into earth. So everything's actually connected, but for the purposes of the suits, we've got a tendency to separate them out. Yes, beautiful, beautiful way to put that. And we will show you some examples of of where it gets confusing and why you really just can't get locked into action. Yeah, oh, traditionally also one <laughs> represents enterprise, you know, like going into business or entrepreneurialism as well. And, and that's another way of you lock into that suit if that's all you think it is. Oh, I... 112 years ago when I learned what the suits meant, I was taught that wands are spirit. They're, it's all spiritual. And and this was in a book. Um, I was about 16 at the time, so I wasn't really all that mature. And spiritual meant to me religious. It only yeah. meant religious. And then, too, that, that uh, was not a correct theme for the wands let's be real but for years and years I tried to force that into reading somebody would uh, ask me a question about a new business how do you how do you possibly put spiritual into that you know go to church talk to God maybe he'll make your business run really <laughs> I, exactly. I was stunted by that by that theme and that's the scary part because if, if we fall into that that trap of going, this can only mean this because it is fire and therefore that represents spirit as one meaning, it makes it impossible to really offer a client an accurate reading, particularly really if their question is about non-spiritual things. Exactly. And when you inter introduce religion into a non-spiritual reading, uh, things can go horribly wrong. <laughs> it doesn't and work. Yeah, and it can get quite confrontational because everyone has different beliefs on what religion is as well. Also, being caught up in that and trying to force it to be spirit. When you have to force a card meaning, you are just shutting down your intuition completely. Yeah. Completely. We'll go ahead and we'll finish, you know, giving you the traditional meanings and, and how Leslie sees them as the element. But we'll also come across the cards that, that, that can trip you up and we'll explain how to get away from being trapped by one mindset. So next is coins and, and coins are traditionally related to the physical realm um, money or possessions or permanency but it has to do with the physical realm a lot of times you see a new reader or even readers that are just uneducated just automatically go to money yeah this everybody's first stop finances yep and it's just because they're coins I'm saying. no they're not always money what do you have to say about that earth element that's represented by the coins yeah. for me the the earth element is about not just about money or about physical things but it's about what we physically do if you think of you know we we talked about ones being the action cards mm -hmm. but to me the the earth or the coins suit tells me what are the physical things that are, be, that are going to be done or have been done, depending on whether you're looking future or past or present. Very nice. Very nice. And not only just, you know, how do I explain this? That, that earth element has a very nurturing quality. You know, it this does. isn't just possessions. This is mine. This is actually things you care about. Yeah, it's literally, I mean, when you think about the term Mother Earth, that's mm -hmm. used, used a lot um, by people in, in a, a spiritual sense and, and in an environmental sense, you know, the Earth nurtures and supports us. Well, what's the Earth? It's the Earth element. And that also brings in things like, you know, what do we think about with the Earth? We think about groundedness. You know, mm -hmm. so in our modern lives, we, we live so much in our heads these days. We're very much in our heads. We're online. We're on screens. We're on computers. And I find for me that earthiness brings my head back into the rest of my body. I'm not just a head living. I'm not just a brain living. I'm a physical body that moves and breathes and allows what's in my brain to come out 
into the world and manifest. Yes. So again, we're seeing, you know, it's not just one thing or another. Everything is connected. You can't just isolate it and say, well, this has only got to do with money and physical property. It, mm. it, it, you're shooting yourself in the foot if you try to limit it that way. I think so. And I think if you're really serious about wanting to either learn to read the tarot or improve your skill set, I think being able to look beyond what has been traditional. And I'm not saying we should throw the baby out with the bathwater. Of course, there are good things in the past around tarot, but we need to look at it in the modern context of who our clients are in this modern world and the types of questions they're asking. I mean, very rarely would you get a, a person coming in going, you know, should, should I, should I, should I murder the king and take over the kingdom next <laughs> week? You know, it's, it's, it's more like, you know, does my boss like me and will I get a promotion? So we've got to look at it in that context as well with the elements. I had three should I murder my king questions just last week. No, ah, no, I'm hilarious. kidding. No, I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have to bring the, the, the archaic images into the modern world, but... Huh. I, it's really easy to do if you look at the image and not just the prevalent character, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. That's um, okay. The other thing I wanted to say about Earth is, is, you know, when we think about the Earth, we think of something that's solid and mm -hmm. it's stable. So I actually apply the, the, the sense of reliability to it as well. Oh, yeah, and practicality. Yeah, and slow and steady. Yep. Yeah. You know, so earth, the earth, you know, like if, if, if the ground underneath us was moving really fast, <laughs> we wouldn't be surviving. No. So, you know, I think of that stability, reliability, and sometimes that slowness or that appearance of not moving is just what's needed for a person sometimes in a reading. Oh, I love that. See, and that's, that, that just went well beyond anything you could read in a book and it made a whole lot of sense and what it means is that when you see a, a card of coins come up in a reading in relation to the context of the question that the clients ask say it's about you know getting married or something you don't have to automatically go to oh well money might be a concern in preparing for the wedding it might be more that you know hey listen you're on solid ground with this relationship mm -hmm. depending on what the card is of course but that's a way of using an element within a card to answer a question. Beautifully put. Well, how about swords? For swords, I have intellect, logic, clear thinking, and manipulation. And that's the element of air attributed to swords, at least in the Rider Waite deck, mm -hmm. and and a lot of and in a lot of the modern decks. Yes, yeah, swords for me. I had difficulty with swords as the air element when I first started looking at tarot because I saw the sword as something that you wield in a fight to either um, win a fight or to defend yourself. And I saw that as very action-based. And so I had difficulty at first coming to terms with swords as air. Well, and I was wondering think... what you thought about when you started looking at swords and air as an element. Um. Well, I was so young, I just took it to, you know, I, I took it to be gospel. I took mm. it to be gospel. But one way that I look at that as far as air, have you ever seen anybody pick up a sword who's never picked up a sword before? <laughs> yeah, I don't know me. what to do with it. <laughs> it's like flailing all over the place in half the time. In order to wield a sword properly, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of willpower to it just like learning the guitar you know yeah. well not quite just like you know not going to beat anybody with your guitar but unless you're led zeppelin or someone <laughs> ozzy osborne <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but it it takes a lot of willpower it takes a lot of thought it takes a lot of precision and you don't get to that point unless you've put a lot of time and thought and yes action into it it's, that's why it's so hard just to take these guidelines at face value because Absolutely. you said it already. Nothing, nothing is just comprised of one thing. And I think that's how I got to, I reconciled air with swords was that, you know, I thought about the art of fencing 
not necessarily in a battle situation, but just, you know, modern day fencing is a competition. It is an art or a sport of strategy. Yes, strategy. And I thought, and I thought strategy, thinking, okay, I can, I can make that connection now. And that was a lot easier from that point on to equate swords with air. And now, you know, there's a really big controversy within the tarot community, whether swords are air and wands of fire or vice versa. People get into knockdown, drag out arguments. I have seen that. <laughs> I have seen that. I have, I have, I, I've been a lurker and I have watched with interest. <laughs> and it's insane. And so far, nobody's won. <laughs> there yeah. are great arguments to each side of the story. And the way the way Dusty explains it is he's like, um, pick the one that makes the most sense to you. If it works for you, it's right for you. Absolutely. But and I let the art within the deck also give me an indication of, of what the element is for the suit. Oh, well. absolutely, yes. I predominantly read Swords as Air and Wands as Fire without getting trapped in them. But I have one specific deck, the Modern Spellcaster's Tarot, that the image is very intent on saying no, Swords are Fire and Wands are Air. And I read the image on the card. And that's the biggest thing. Even if I were of the, the school of thought, wands are air and swords are fire. Even with those images in front of me, sometimes that image is going to not have anything to do with air or fire. I'm going to trust yeah. the image and my intuition. And we're going to we're gonna show you a few cards in the Rider Waite deck that actually speak to that. And I think the other thing with the whole fire, air, um, wands versus swords argument is I think it depends on for many people who are arguing and justifying and standing their ground which they're perfectly entitled to do I think it all depends on what their esoteric background is as well a lot of people come from an esoteric background that might be you know ceremonial magic for example mm -hmm. and there's, e there's even you know arguments about the, the so-called correct order that the elements should be listed in as well um, you know, from, from highest vibration or least density to most density, um, or there's, you know, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. So it depends on what the history of the person is and what their background is and how they've been taught that I think can influence quite strongly a belief system around what something means. Very good point. And instead of trying to force a system that doesn't work for you into your readings, because that's counterintuitive. It's Absolutely. counterintuitive. If you are raised to believe something and you believe it completely, you can't just make it all change so you can read a deck of cards. You have to stay true to yourself and to everything we do, we do from our own perspective from our world experience and we can't force somebody else's world experience into it because it shuts down our intuition so stick Absolutely. to your guns and and let let joe blow down the street think think what he's thinking as long as his readings are consistent and accurate it works for him via con Dios, right Absolutely, because we each have our own way, our own path, and it's about learning. I think once you've got that intuitive connection and you can trust it, mm -hmm. I think that's when it's a bit easier to go, okay, I can step outside the box a little and see what really works. And feedback from your clients um, will definitely help you to build that trust on your own intu of your own intuition. Right, right. And and I I. I bet there are people asking, well, how does that work in group, <laughs> you know, when we're all <laughs> learning together? Uh, the thing is, we, we let each other know, this, this is how I see this. So when I interpret this card, it will be through my interpretation. It will be through my worldview. As long as we know that there, there might be one person in the group that's like, no, I see wands as air and I have to interpret it this way, we listen to what they have to say. If it's if it's if it actually answers the question or applies to the situation, they're not wrong. They're just and different. Let's, and let's face it, lots of times people come from different backgrounds, ways of reasoning, and lots of times we'll come to the same answer or conclusion. Yes. They're just taking a different path to get there, that's all. Right. 
Right. And that's the beauty of the school. We don't force feed. We don't no. say, you know, oh, you've got to learn it this way or get the hell out. But we show you how to come to your own vision. And that's what I've loved about Dusty's course, whether it be around the elements or any aspect of, of the tarot, he teaches critical thinking and and internal com contemplation, not just, here's a card, it means this, it's this element, go tell your client that. Right. He's constantly saying, you know, there are only 78 cards. More than 78 things happen in an hour, let alone a day, let alone a lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. So let's move on to cups real quick. We can, yep. <laughs> this, like I said, this is a very simple concept. But once you start diving into it, it gets a little complicated. Yeah. All right. So the last one we have is cups. And cups is written as emotion, sensuality, musical or artistic creativity, emotional response, intuition, instincts, happiness, or lack thereof. When I look at the element of water, mm -hmm. um, it's something that, that flows. Or it can be still like a lake. It can flow like a river. It can be still like a lake. Mm -hmm. It can be very deep. It can be very shallow. It can be a tsunami that destroys. It can be a gentle wave that a child paddles in. So to me, water is all about movement. And when you think about the, the word emotion, um, the way I learned that word when I was you know, delving into, into metaphysical things, I was thinking of it as energy in motion. Oh. And we portray and we portray that as our different emotions. You know, the energy of love, the energy of anger. So uh, when I look at the water element and I look at the cards, I don't just look at oh, this is the love suit or the romance suit. I think about the whole gamut of emotions and feelings, and as well that intuitive capacity. It's almost like that ghost in the machine kind of thing. Oh, that was brilliant. That was beautifully put. Thank you. I need to have you on more podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I love the way that you were able to, to respond to each traditional meaning with more depth. I, you added so much depth to that, and you showed why they can't just be locked into one thing. Now, again, I really want to emphasize that, that – these keywords that you'll see, these elements for these suits, are, are truly guidelines to help you learn. Once you've got a grasp on that, don't trap yourself by thinking that it has to be what the book says. Sometimes you're going to see something that just really screams at you. And that's your intuition screaming when 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 it goes. Yeah. Up, 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 up. <laughs> so I'd really like to address some of those cards within the suits that just don't make sense as far as being trapped by the element. I love and, it. Yeah, the first card that I would like to to talk about is the Three of Swords. Here we have yep. logic, intellect, communication. But that is one of the most absolute emotional cards in the entire deck. You cannot look at that without thinking, oh, ow, that poor person. Yeah. You know, cut to the heart. Yeah. Total cut to the heart. And I had had a really interesting conversation just today um, with a friend of mine named Justin who's in the school. And every time I'd ever seen this card up to, to today, I've always seen it as the receiving end. You know, I've seen the, 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 the card as being the person who has the swords in the heart, the one going through the heartbreak mm -hmm. and through, through the depression and the, the emotion of, of being so utterly betrayed and destroyed. But he actually had me seeing it from the perspective of the person causing the heartbreak, the anger and, and the hatred that would go into to putting those swords into somebody's heart, not just one but three, with such precision. And the other thing about that, when I've never thought of it that way either, because I, to me I was, was seeing it as receptive, yep. but when we look, if we look at the element of air, the element of air expands, so it's going out. So that kind of makes sense with the element. 
But the other thing I notice about this card is all the rain in the background. That, that always makes me think of tears, which makes me think of emotion and therefore the element of water. Right. Absolutely. So how many of the swords cards is water actually present? One. I'm looking at my exercise 11 right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of ten. Mm. You know, I'm not counting the, the court cards. Six yeah. out of ten. It's not saying it's purely air. Water is present. And even yeah. in that three of swords, passion is present. Because you can't have or give that kind of heartache if passion weren't involved. That's right. Exactly. A lot of anger when you know like particularly in a romantic one like in a romantic situation when a, a relationship breaks up and there's a lot of anger mm -hmm. the anger is is a lot of times about fear of the future and grief as well good point because oh my god okay that ten of swords somebody yeah. was really pissed off <laughs> yeah <laughs> or a lot of somebody's <laughs> <laughs> so you can't look at it and take all the other elements out just because it's a sword. Yeah. Un unless they're a psycho serial killer who has who has no emotions. <laughs> and ho know. hopefully those are far and few between. Well, that's right. And I don't want any of those as a client. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, my God. I know, right? <laughs> and it's the same thing with, uh, say, something like the Two of Wands. You know, we've got the merchant standing on the top of the, the building. He looks quite well off. He's holding the world in his hand. But, you know, as he's gazing at the world, we've got the, the harbour out in front of him. We've got the earth all around him. There's lots of greenery. Um, he's very earthed in his home or mansion, whatever you want to call it. So there are actually quite a few elements that you could bring in there around interpreting that card, not just that, oh, it's, it's wands, therefore it's fire. I actually don't see that much fire in there, to be honest. No, just just hit that spark. You know, mm. not every time, but often I see this as that 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 um that idea, that spark of possibility, and he's yeah. planning how to bring that idea into fruition. Yeah. So so the only fire that really is there does seem to be that spark. Because he's yeah, it's far not a, seeing. Yeah, it's not a full blown. He's he's actually quite in his head, really, because he's gazing at the world. Mm -hmm. So he's 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 actually more in the air element within his head, I think, when I look at this card, and he's considering possibilities and ways forward. I have to agree. And again, it all comes back to that image. It's really good to know what each suit represents. Mm because it does help you form some but it's also more important to to take the image as a whole or the piece of the image that strikes you at the moment yeah and and applying the elements within that two of wands mm -hmm. yes the initial spark is there which has given him the motivation to start you know contemplating planning whatever it is going to be but he needs all of those other elements to be able to create the plan Right, right. Otherwise, it just stays a spark and goes nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's how you can look at a card and see how the other elements can either intensify what the suit is elementally meant to be about or um, dilute what the suit element is meant to be about. Does that make sense? That makes absolute sense. And back to the Three of Swords, you know, that kind of emotion, if you're on the receiving or the giving end, actually does dilute the intelligence or the logic behind mm. the action. So you yeah, have because, to see how they interact. Yeah, because that, I mean, just looking at that card just warrants an emotional response. So many people get tripped up thinking, oh, no, no, it can't have anything to do with emotion because it's not a cups card. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't have to be. The image and your intuition trump everything. You know, I'm, Absolutely. I'm looking at the three of cups right now as a, a water card. It's an emotional card. But there is a strong earth element in the card with with the harvest at their feet yeah um, there's a sense of, of a strong sense of abundance isn't there mm -hmm. 
Yes. Or achievement, you know? Yeah. Bringing in the harvest, abundance, achievement. So it's, you really don't stop yourself with a keyword, whether it's on the trumps, whether it's on the pips, whether it's to a suit or each individual card. You do want to know the overlying theme. But again, and I know I sound like repetitive, but do not be trapped by that overlying theme. Because it, it will affect the quality of your readings. It really will. Leslie, do you have anything to add? Well, I just wanted to, to sort of finish up by saying that, that, you know, the way Dusty teaches has helped me break out of those old patterns that I used to have about this must mean this, this must mean that. I mean, I've always read intuitively, but at the back of my mind, there was always that sort of structure that was there that was very um, constrained. And I know for myself, if I was doing a reading and you know, we all, it happens to all of us, your mind goes a bit blank and I would immediately fall back on one of those old patterns. And that necessarily wasn't relevant to the card meaning in relation to the question. So the course that I that we did with Dusty over that 40 weeks or whatever it was really helped me to think critically about what am I seeing in the card? How does that relate to what the question is that the client has asked so that I can connect with my intuition to give the most informed, helpful answer that I can that is accurate at the time? Beautifully put. Absolutely. And... <laughs> There are a lot of people out there who say, you know, I, I uh, psychic reading should be just intuitive. Taking a course will just trip me up and make me not be able to read. And I think learning everything that we do, is, and, and I've said this so many times, I'm almost sick of myself hearing it, but, but it really applies. You know, you got to learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Absolutely. I love Dusty's analogy of the fish in the goldfish bowl. Yes. The, the definitions, the meanings, the structure of the tarot is the goldfish bowl. And you as the reader are the ones interpreting what the goldfish bowl is about. And there are times when you can just go too far left field. Um, you know, like I, the, like I wouldn't look at the devil card and say, oh, you know, um, that's a, a card that represents um, a, a priest or a nun or something, you know, who were doing good in the world. That's just too far out. That you know, the fish has jumped out of the bowl at that point and not breathing and not thinking. So you need the structure there. But once you have the structure, you then have the freedom to go. Well, how does that apply in this reading, in this instance, at this time? And and you would really be surprised. At the at the at the traps and the biases and the superstition that that you can be stuck in, I mean, I read it. I read it. I read for <laughs> thirty years before I took this course. I had taken other courses in the past and just, oh, all kinds of frou frou, meaningless crap. But um, when I when I took this course, I had been reading for thirty three years, and I was considered a good reader. And my husband was like, why are you taking this course? And I was like, because I'm missing something. There's something yeah. I'm missing and I have to find it. Don't wait 33 years to get to that point. And for for the first six months taking the course, I honestly, Leslie, I could not read. I was so confused because of all the bullshit that was in my head that I didn't yeah. even realize that was there. And and honestly I've kept some of my bullshit. I'm I'm trapped with it. But I don't it it, it was extraneous bullshit. Like uh, I don't even know how to explain it. I I still use my crystals. No, I I, un, I understand. Something becomes so indoctrinated mm -hmm. over time that it becomes part of you and you just can't it's hard to let it go. I mean, I know myself, like I, I've read semi-professionally, professionally, done it for free on and off. I mean, I started with exploring the cards, gosh, showing my age here, 42 years ago. And <laughs> I know I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an old, I'm not a granny, but I'm an oldie. But at the same time, I actually stopped charging um, for my services because I just didn't feel confident that I was offering the best that I could. And it's only since I've come back doing Dusty's course and completed that that I actually feel confident charging again. 
Why did we wait so long? Because there wasn't the internet back then. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. All we had was Eden Gray. That's, that's <laughs> my that, that that's my excuse. <laughs> there was no internet, so I didn't know Dusty existed. <laughs> <laughs> but I and, you, and I went through a period of time that I had a really difficult time reading. But once I broke through those barriers, you know, early on, this isn't working for me. It was still trapped in my head and it would still rear up and say, oh, you're doing it wrong. They still haunt you. And it, it did. It took about six months for me to break through those barriers that held me back. But I have more confidence and more accuracy now than I than I ever did in all the times of trying to just do it intuitively. Yeah. It, and that's why I, that's why I keep going back to the basic exercises. Mm -hmm. Even though I've completed the course and I'm now, you know, charging for my readings and seeing clients, I still go back to those base courses because I still find new things in the cards and I look at them in relation to the elements of the suit and go, "Well, okay, you know, what else can I see in there around that?" And I would like to rectify what I just said. What I mean by reading intuitively as far as what I just said was without any kind of training. <laughs> um, yeah. It's really not intuitive. It's just reaching out in the dark. Once okay. you've learned these basic rules and how to apply them and gone through the exercises, your intuition grows so much more and, and your yappy dog gets smaller and smaller. He never really goes away completely. Uh, if he does, you're, you're, you're I, kidding I yourself. Agree. <laughs> I, I keep coming, uh, uh, honestly, that, that goldfish in the goldfish bowl analogy from Dusty has stuck in my head every time I do a reading. If I'm doing a reading and I've got something left field, I go, hang on, am I jumping out of the fish bowl here or am I staying within, staying true to the structure? Because everything needs structure. We, you know, if we were just using our intuition, it wouldn't matter what question the client asked. My intuition might say, the client might ask about, am I going to get my job that I went for the interview for? And my intuition might go, oh, oh, I feel there's a new love coming into your life. Well, the client doesn't want to know about that at that time. Yeah, they don't, that's not what they asked. And, oh, I used to do that all the, I always, you know, I didn't know how to keep it to the question mm -hmm. for years and, 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 and I'm guilty. I would do that. Oh, no. This is what you really need to know about this now. Oh, my God. Just if I had a dollar for every time I had done that in my early years, I, I would be filthy rich. And, and I find in some ways, and I'm probably maybe stepping on a few toes here, but I find it a little bit disrespectful to the client not to focus on what it is they're asking. Oh, I find it extremely dis disrespectful. Uh, they're invested in this, whether or not they're paying money. But if it's a paying mm. client. The other thing I, I was going to say also was that, you know, sometimes when you are reading for clients, particularly if your intuition is well developed, you will get an insight about something that the client hasn't asked about. So what I usually will do is I will wait till the end of the reading or I will say, look, I'm stepping away from your question in the cards right now because I have this, this intuitive sense that's come through. May I share it with you? And then I'll tell them what it is. And then I'll step back in and say, right, now we're coming back into the reading or I'll wait till the end of the reading and do it then. But I always ask permission if they want to know about it first. That's a really good good way to to put that i i love that and i'm glad you addressed that and heck we may even have to do a podcast on that in the future we can yeah because it means then the you know the client um isn't getting confused about what you're seeing in the cards because they you know the client doesn't know the client's looking at the cards and you're pointing things out and then suddenly you go oh i've got this intuition if you don't explain that no i'm not getting this from the cards i'm just getting this intuitive sense so that they know it's not part of the card reading. Yeah, yeah, I have to do that because cause every now and then I'll be like, um, th this is totally not in the cards, but bloof, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and a lot of times it'll show up in a later card. <laughs> it's like, it is it's so true, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and then you're just sitting there going, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at yourself like if I had just waited five more seconds <laughs> but then again that's good validation for you as the reader knowing that your intuition is on track with what's coming up with the cards that is absolute truth
we went a little bit on left field there, but that's yeah. okay. I think we put a lot of information out there and food for thought. And possibly if you if you would like to hear a podcast on anything that we've touched on today, leave a note in the comments. We'll, we'll do it. But today we went over elements. We went over their traditional meanings or one of their traditional meanings because many books will tell you many different things. But then we had Leslie explain what those elements actually meant how they applied and we also talked about how to use these elements as guidelines and not to be trapped and saying it can only mean this hopefully we showed you how to use some intuition and looking at the cards and the most important thing is the image speaks to you get to know those images to where they have a larger vocabulary. And what's wonderful is that Dusty's got a lot of, um, you know, the free podcast here, but he's also got lots of YouTubes that show those beginner exercises. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's the free course as well. That's right. If, if you would like to learn with us, go to houseofwhite.net, and the first month is a dollar. You sign up. You see if you like it. If you don't like it, Dusty will give you your daggone dollar back. Now, that's a bargain you can't refuse. <laughs> Everybody stay tuned in. We will be bringing you lots more podcasts, and I will definitely be having Leslie as a, a guest again. You you are just amazing, Leslie. Thank you for taking this oh, thank time. you. It was great fun to be here, and I love discussing elements and all things tarot. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.